Hey guys and welcome or welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how I transformed my small New York City apartment bathroom from bland and boring to bright and luxurious. All of the upgrades that I did are apartment friendly and extremely easy to do. Make sure to keep watching for the entire transformation. First things first, we're going to clear out the bathroom. Most of the stuff that I took down, I gave back to the maintenance man. Luckily he was cool, or at least I think he was. Um, with me changing up things in the bathroom. To take off all of the fixtures, I'm using this screwdriver. I got a really handy toolbox from Amazon that pretty much has everything in it. So if you're in need of one, I'll be sure to link it down below. Um, some of the hardware was a bit worn down, but I eventually got them all out. Before I start, I'm actually going to clean the floor, shower, etc. so I can start with a nice, clean slate. And this is what it looks like when it's completely cleaned out, very gray, very bland, but we're gonna change that. So I did a poll on my Instagram on which contact paper I should use for the cabinets, and it was pretty much neck and neck, but the light green came out on top, so I started with that. I measured out the cabinet, then cut out strips for each side. Now, you don't have to measure it, you can eyeball it, but in the case where you only buy a certain amount of paper, measuring definitely helps. Once I have the backing peeled off, I'm going to place the paper on the cabinet and smooth it out so there are no bubbles. Contact paper is essentially like a giant sticker. You can use it on walls, cabinets, dressers, really whatever you want and it adds a pop of color for a low cost plus it's easy to remove for all of you guys that live in apartments. If you haven't already, make sure to tap that subscribe button and notification bell so you're alerted when I post new videos. For the ends, there really was no method. I just tried to tuck as much of the excess behind the cabinet as possible. I got the light green in a large roll, so I would definitely suggest getting the smaller one just so you can get an idea of what it will look like without wasting too much money. Once I have the paper on, I switch out the hardware, which I did another poll on, and if you're not following me on Instagram, make sure to do that for exclusive updates on my apartment and to be included on the decision making when it comes to my DIY project. This is what it ended up looking like. I wasn't a big fan of it. It kind of looked pukey or like a hospital green at first, but once everything was finished, it did end up looking good. On the bottom vanity, I cleaned off the cabinet door. Um, it was really gross and dusty, and you want to do that for you know any door that you take off. And you want to do that, one, because that's gross, and two, because all of that dust is going to show up under the paper or just not make the paper stick as well, and we don't want that. Now, there's a couple of ways you can put the paper on. So I tried all of them just for you guys <laughs> well not really just for you guys because if one didn't work I would just go to the next and to the next and to the next so first you can do sections now the downside to this is that the middle part did start to lift because the edges were cut so short and they weren't like tucked under anything I do think that using a blow dryer might have helped but I honestly didn't think that far ahead I will say that doing it in sections was probably the most time consuming of the three ways that I've tried this. But I also feel like this looks the best out of all of them. So the contact paper comes in different lengths. For the darker green, I bought one 17.7 inch by 78.7 inch and a 17.7 inch by 118 inches. And with the amount of times that I messed things up, these were just enough. Now, the lengths do go up to at least 787 inches. And depending on how many cabinets you have, you can just figure out how much you would need. I only had the one cabinet, so I used a smaller amount of paper. Next, I tried using the blow drying method, which I watched a few videos on how to do it, but Honestly, it was just not working for me. I don't know if it was because my patience was running thin or maybe that I'm just not a professional, but this was my least favorite and messiest technique, if we can even call it that. The paper would just buckle and crease and just look terrible. And I'm sure if you have some sort of idea of what you're doing when it comes to this, it'll look fine, but I was just winging it so it looked bad. Last but certainly not least, and what I think was the most successful way to do these, is to not do the insert part at all. 
I think that's what you would call them. I simply pulled the paper tight enough so that it looks like a flat cabinet door. Now, this was the easiest and least time consuming method. I did end up running out of paper, so that's why one of them looks a little janky, but I'm gonna fix that eventually. I think it looks pretty good, but let me know what your favorite method is down below. And as you can see, I ended up doing them two-tone because the lighter green was just too much for me and I just couldn't visualize it being the accent color for the bathroom. There are a lot of moving parts to this bathroom and one of them is that I got a new shower head um, and it has a, uh, a t detachable like side part. Oh my God, so ashy. Um, and it comes with instructions so I should be able to put it together. Hopefully, um, but we gonna see. I'm really excited because I just feel like this makes it look, this will make it look more luxurious and just cute and I just deserve. So this thing works, things like that. And you can change. Ah, oh, so good! Different functions, so cute! Using some old spray paint that I had in metallic gold, I spray painted all of the hardware out on my fire escape. Now you don't wanna do this on a windy day like I did because it just blew back into the window, into my apartment, and it does not smell good, y'all. I did finish painting the hardware, so I just left it outside to dry. I found this Miracle Grout pen, um, and it's basically just supposed to make it look whiter. And I feel like if I do, whew, I don't know how much it covers, and I asked the guy in Lowe's, but he didn't know, you know. Um, so we're gonna see, I bought two just in case. If I run out, oh well. Now, I honestly don't recommend using this. It doesn't come out easily, and it looks better when you have to go down the tile versus across, and you have to go over it about two to three times for it to actually look white, and it gets on the tile, which kind of like makes it look messy all over again. Plus, it took a long time, so there's just a lot of, <laughs> A lot of negatives here guys so I wouldn't do it if you want to more power to you but I did I think like a little section of the shower and I was just like no this is no this is the floor tile that everyone selected that I do I did um, do a poll between two different ones and this was the winner so I'm just laying out the tiles just to see what they'll look like well, this isn't be really cute guys now I'm feeling my spirit I feel like whatever is next to the toilet should be like where it is because I know cutting around the toilet is really hard. So, I don't know y'all nervous. I don't know, let's just get started. Let's just do it. Let's just do it. Do it, do it, do it, do it. Very quickly, I noticed that the tiles do not match up. You have to keep switching them around to get a match, which is a little annoying because some of them didn't match at all and I was very paranoid that it wasn't gonna work and I was gonna have um, extra tiles left over that didn't look good. But honestly, you can't tell. And I'm going to have a bath mat, my little wooden storage thing over it, so it's not really gonna be as noticeable. Make sure that if you do this, that you start with places that will be most visible first and make sure that's all set and ready to go. Now for the smaller spaces, to cut the tile, I measured it out, then scored it using a box cutter. From there, I just kept bending the tile on that score until it snapped, and there you go. Now to cut around the toilet, I bent the tile as much as I possibly could around that side, and then kept cutting it down little by little so it'd be easier to work with. Because I ran out of floor tiles, I obviously bought more to finish the floors. Now, I was trying to be cheap and bought the um, used but like new tiles that Amazon sells. And then once I got them, I realized they were a bit off-white compared to the ones that I already had down. And I was tired of returning things, so I just put them down. Now, thankfully, those were going in places that weren't totally visible, which is great. But I would suggest getting new ones from the jump just because you'll be able to return them. That's another thing you can't return. Um, I don't think they'll use tiles, um, but you can return new ones without a problem and it'll likely be in the same color. Now, I'm not sure if these had like oxidized or anything, but they definitely were different. So this is what it's looking like right now. It's pretty cute though. I will give it that. It definitely makes the bathroom feel a lot bigger and like 
just brighter. All right, so we're back to finishing up the cabinets. The medicine cabinet is pretty self-explanatory since it's basically straight boxes, but for the bottom part under the sink, it is making sort of an upside down arc shape. To get an idea of what I needed to cut, I used some paper I saved from the back of some old contact paper and used a marker to trace out that part. And I just kept measuring that space and cutting it to clean up the arch. Once I had it semi close to what it should be, I used a marker to trace the arch on the back of the contact paper that I was going to be using on the vanity. After I had it cut, I put it up against the cabinet and then just scored it with my fingernail so I would know where to cut it again. That way it's more of a perfect fit. And yes, using your fingernails to score the paper does work and that just goes to show you how easily marked up this paper can get. Now I did have some excess and I just tucked it under so it's not visible, but still looks seamless. Now the inside is gonna look very much DIY, but nobody should be looking inside those cabinets anyways. This is what it ends up looking like. I didn't do all of the inside as you can see because the doors are essentially gonna be covering them anyways. Afterwards, I put back on all the hardware that I had spray painted the day before. It took roughly a day to dry and I left it outside to dry. So I finished doing the green on the outside and it's two-tone. I think it's real cute. Um, I think it's given depth and dimension. I also got someone to change out the light fixture. So this is, ooh, if it'll focus. That's the new light fixture. Um, and then this is the other light fixture that I got at the top. If you guys remember, I had like that gray nippleish ring um, looking thing, but now I have these. So I'm really indecisive when it comes to what kind of lighting I want, like warm light, cool light. So I found these really cool um, light bulbs from Home Depot, you can get them Home Depot Lowe's, and you can basically switch the type of light that you want. I think these are the most convenient light bulbs that I've ever purchased. If you have flat cabinets, more power to you because that this will be a cinch. These divots and cracks and corners and slits and all that, not my forte, but you know, this bathroom is for me and for you too, so it is what it is. For the finishing touches, I'm putting up some shelving like the one that was there before, but I feel like this acrylic gives it a more modern and airy touch. And this actually isn't a bathroom shelf, it's actually a display shelf for pictures. It basically works just as good as a normal shelf. So I think putting that shelf, that little shelf that y'all can barely see, up was probably the scariest thing that I have done in this whole DIY because I didn't put two and two together and like obviously this is a bathroom there are pipes there's so many things behind the wall that I don't know about hence why I tried using the sun finder but I only use that for when I'm putting my pole so I don't even know why I did that like I knew what was going on um, and I was being too lazy to google it so I actually got something else from Ikea that requires me to put four holes not just one, but four. Um, and I just don't even feel comfortable doing it. So I'm gonna try to just put it up with um, command strips and see if it holds, hopefully. Fingers crossed that it does, but I'm not sure. So this was also from Ikea. It's called the Hull Tarp and it is for the kitchen, it's kitchen storage, but I thought it would be cute in the bathroom. So I just use it there and let me tell y'all, it's so freaking cute. Yeah, I don't know if it's gonna hold because I have three of these and I know command strips hold like paintings and stuff. Like, I don't know if this is gonna work, but you'll never know until you try. So let's give it a go. Let's see. Let's see what happens because I'm nervous. I can't do no more holes. I didn't press it in, so that's my fault. So once I actually pushed the command strips in, I realized that it probably wouldn't have held up everything that I wanted to put up on this little contraption. So I ended up just drilling two holes instead of the four that were needed. Now, for some reason, the drill wasn't actually getting through the wall, so I ended up having to screw everything in by hand. And that's probably because I am not well versed in using a um, power drill or tools in general. But hey, we tried. 
The Chanel print I got from Burlington Coat Factory. Yes, y'all, Burlington Coat Factory. They have so much cute little things. Definitely check them out in your city. But it's definitely giving me all the feels of a luxury bathroom, and that's what we want. Most of the products that I got in this video were from Amazon. I did get a few things from Target as well as Ikea. But like I said before, I'll be sure to leave the link to everything. Let me know if you want more videos like this down below as well. I am planning on doing an accent slat wall in my living room just because for no reason um so that video will be coming soon but if there's anything else that you want me to diy or try to reconfigure or do let me know down below and this is the final look guys can you say obsessed i feel like the bathroom looks so much brighter and it's just so inviting like it just gives me such a great vibe every time i walk into there literally every time i walk by it i just look at it and i'm just like I just love it here because I really do. I'm so happy with the way that it turned out. I feel like it definitely is giving that luxurious vibe um, and it's starting to just match the entire aesthetic of my apartment, which is what I was really going for. So I'm really happy that it came out well. Let me know what you guys think down below. Are we feeling it? Are we not? Is there anything that you're like super in love with? Is there anything that you think that I could change? Let me know down below. Thank you guys so, so much for watching and I will see you in my next video. Bye guys.